Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm with my co-host Jeff Frick, the general manager of The Cube. And we are live in San Francisco for exclusive coverage for Oracle Open World. And our next guest is Whitney Drake, manager of social strategy and care at General Motors. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much, happy to be here. We are super excited about this uh, segment because we love social data. Um, we love our media business, all based on social distribution, engagement, interaction. But for Oracle Open World, it really represents the new way of how things are getting done. And, and the database, structured databases, you know, columns and fields, you know, now can handle unstructured data, data, which is all social. And the user experience and user expectations now are social. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, tell us about what you guys are doing because, you know, you could really do a lot of good things with social. So I want to hear, you know, the care and what you guys are doing. Obviously, customer support, identifying, you know, potentially things happening in your customer base, persona base, 360 degree view. Share your share your. Uh, your social strategy. All right. I would love to. <laughs> Here on the Cube. <laughs> uh, so we have several different parts and pieces of our social strategy at GM. One element is social care, where we're monitoring. We have 24 agents in the US that monitor all of what's happening within social care. So mainly forums, Facebook and Twitter right now, and then obviously Instagram is up and coming. So we help customers adjust, uh, set their clock if they're having a question about OnStar. We also provide marketing support on Twitter. So if someone's looking for a car, we'll help facilitate a test drive at a dealer, get them any information they might need, and then hopefully sell you know, a car or truck. And we do that seven days a week, 16 hours a day. And in 2015, we rolled global care out to 25 markets. So we have about 145 agents globally working on social care. And so it's awesome. It's a huge task because we have over 145 social pages globally and every different level of engagement on those pages. So that's one part of the puzzle. The other part of the puzzle is how we go to market from a community management marketing perspective. So not just pushing messages, but engaging with customers. So we have a story about Little Red that we like to talk about. So he was, Little Red's owner was Richie. And every Friday he would post, Little Red and I are off on adventure. And one Friday, the Chevy team didn't hear from him. And they were like, hey, Richie, are you in Little Red OK? And he replied, oh, yeah, we're just on vacation. Everything's great. <laughs> and so it's just you know, more than just pushing your message out, but trying to find those points of engagement. It's so a heartbeat with your like customer that. base. Exactly. You're connecting with people on a personal level. Yeah, exactly. And that's what social allows customers and companies to do. Can you share the <clears throat> their view? Because customers want to contact just instantly. I mean, you got Snapchat, you got Instagram, and I have four kids, my two in college, and I'm trying to get on my daughter's story on storyline on Snapchat. She still hasn't let me on. Dad, you'll never be on my Snapchat story. But this is the new channel. They're not going to pick up the phone. My oldest doesn't have voicemail. That's we won't set it up. So the touch points are really the key for the mm -hmm. care piece. How share some anecdotal um, color around how that's been with the customer base? And they tweet you direct messages. Is that how you're connecting? Yeah. Can you share some use cases and just day in the life? Yeah, um, they t obviously they use Twitter and they use Facebook. And like I mentioned, we're starting to see a lot more engagement on Instagram, especially with the paid part of Instagram. So we'll have customers who um, might be having an issue with vehicle. Just last week, we had a customer on a forum that posted he was having an issue with his infotainment system going on and off. And so customer care jumped in, worked with our infotainment team to figure out what was going on, talked to the dealer, dealer had the fix, got it all resolved. Well, in the meantime, a Canadian customer saw it. And the Canadian customer's dealer didn't know anything about it. So we ended up working with our Canadian team and our technical assistance team to get the help in Canada. And that's what using a global tool allows us to do because we're able to see the conversations happening all over the world. It's real time. They're, yeah. they're on the go. It's data in motion. People are in motion. Cars are in motion. Yep. Um, Jeff, we talk about this all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm curious, Whitney, because cars are such an emotional thing. I mean, you look at the advertising around cars and it's really about the emotion of the car experience, whether it's a truck or a Corvette or you know, going out on the town and being yep. all dressed up. And how does that really kind of map back to the social piece of really having more of an engaged conversation and connection with people. Yeah, we like to say we have really passionate owners, so we hear them loud and clear on a regular basis. And I think the 
it's really awesome because I've also overseen social for life insurance. You're never going to be as passionate about life insurance. And, you know, you need it, but you're never going to be as passionate about it as you are about your car and, and how much you're spending. I think the other challenge for us is you were talking earlier about the response time. Because a lot of what's happening with auto is not as quick as turning around a reservation at an airline, it does take us a little bit longer to get a customer the service that they need and close out a case. But customers expect it, and in the future we believe as millennials are now buying more cars, and they are still passionate. There was just an article this week that says that they do care about driving or transportation, maybe not the way that a generation ago did, but it's still important that we're going to see even more social engagement, you know, and and we love it. I mean, Corvette owners are some of our most passionate. Right, owners. right. Well, I was born in Bowling Green, so I've been to the, I've been to the factory. I was born there. I still don't have a Corvette. I'm waiting for my Corvette, John. But the other interesting thing is I'll make um, a note of myself. Yeah, make a note, I made a note make to a myself. Note, make a note. Um, <laughs> color would you like? GM was so ahead of the curve with OnStar and really having a connection directly to the vehicle. How has that, you know? I think before it was like if you got in a crash or you needed mm -hmm. kind of concierge services, how has that adapted over time and how did that kind of give you guys an early footprint into connecting directly inside of the vehicle? Yeah, so OnStar data is something that we try to look at and now um, actually social care was in one area and OnStar social care was in a separate and earlier this year we brought them together so that we're able to give holistically look at a customer. Like if you've had an OnStar issue, you know, or you've had a vehicle issue, could we provide you OnStar extension? Do we want to bring you back? How can we leverage that data? And as infotainment increases over time, we'll be able to leverage more data from the head unit in what we're doing from a, a social perspective. So it's all, you know, the internet of things and the future of, of how we look at a customer and how a customer engages with us will definitely be something that we're taking obviously into consideration. Obviously OnStar DNA obviously helps the mindset in the company, but talk about the culture. Uh, obviously, to have the success you've had, what's the mindset internally for the management? They obviously must say, hey, we got the market research that shows this is how the millennials and the new, the natives, if you will, native internet uh, generation, like my youngest daughter. Yeah, I mean, leadership is really supportive. Mary Barra just got recognized for her presence on Facebook, which was awesome. Our CEO is out there, you know, she's tweeting, she's talking, she wants to be a part of it. She understands the importance of both social and social care and customer care. and. At GM, one of the mantras in our mission is that the customer is at the center of everything we do. So every journey starts and ends yeah. with the customer. So we have to keep that in mind as we're trying to do what's best for them. You know, it's really great. We always say here at Oracle, all the executives have come through, all the uh, Oracle top top guys, except for Mark Hurd and Sapphire Katz. We'll get them on sometime. <laughs> uh, but um, if they can, and Larry, if we can. <laughs> I tried to taunt Larry on earlier uh, during the <laughs> keynote. But, well, now you have the access, you have the touch points, you have the, the, the customer cares, you got your channel set up, you got the engagement going on, you have the open line of communication, you're listening, that's going to throw up a lot of data. Mm -hmm. This is a data center value proposition for all of Oracle now. Yep. How are you guys operationalize that internally? Okay, so the front end, social teams doing their thing, mm -hmm. new strategies, new, new, new tool, you're trying this, trying that, but at the end of the day you lock in what's working. Mm -hmm. How do you bring it into the company to hit that customer-centric mission. Um, how's the data being uh, uh, ingested? How are they using it for ROI? Can you share some internal? Yeah, so I think, you know, in the beginning we were really concerned about what is or isn't working in the social space. What time of day? What day of week? How many characters is it? You know, what is the sweet spot? And now I think our, sh our focus has shifted is how can this data help us sell more cars, improve quality and vehicle um, productivity and leverage, you know, this live focus group that we have. So for example, um, when we launched the Silverado and the Sierra, K2XX is their code name, not so, not so secret. Yeah. But anyways, um, <laughs> we had a special team that was looking at quality ground up in the social space and we noticed in the forums that the steering wheel was getting too hot to the touch and customers were complaining and the cooled seats were venting hot air into the rear passenger. And we picked this up in the forum and we quickly got with the technical assistance team and was, how did we not see this? Well, we had run our test fleet in a cold climate. I mean, we're in Michigan, it was winter. And these were early vehicles available down south. And so the team was able to take the steering wheel out of production immediately and within 30 days they were able to reroute the ventilation for the cooled seat. So that's real world data that probably would have taken us 30 or 60 or 90 days previously. So I think that's a huge opportunity for us. So one of the things that we're trying to look at as we move into 16 is what was the ROI of warranty costs if you intercept that early. And then I think another thing we're trying to look at from an ROI is call center versus so 
social and how we can help. And then looking at the average ownership of a vehicle, so it's 11 years in the US, how do we get ahead of that? Because as millennials start to buy, we want to be there to help provide social care. And, yeah, and that's look real at ROI data. right yeah. there. Yeah, I want to dig in a little bit. So what was the forum that, that, that data it came It was a across? truck forum. It's a truck forum. Yep. So you're We monitor, monitor about 120 forums in the US and um, we're rolling that out globally to do it as well. So we have agents on there every day monitoring the conversations and engaging where appropriate. And how, how do you see the, the um, either the traffic flow or the kind of intensity of, of the information shifting from you know people calling, you know, 1-800, my, my steering wheel's yeah. too hot versus <laughs> just a public outcry of I'm frying my kid in the back seat, you know, um, we need to adjust this thing. I think that we haven't seen the shift yet, but I think that goes back to the average age of our owner and how long keep people keep vehicles. But we do expect that. Well, another thing that we were talking about is awareness that automotive companies are in the social space, helping with social care. I think everyone knows that the airlines are there, but I'm not sure that they fully know that auto companies are there. Because GM was actually leading in this space, and now we're seeing the competition come online. So we've talked about how do we raise awareness for what we're doing in the space and, and help more people. And with that 11 years in between purchases, I mean, I would imagine the social is a pretty important tool to keep those people engaged because yep. they're not going to buy a car for a while, yep. right, in theory. They just bought one, they're locked in for a little while, but you want to keep them really engaged, yep. part of the family, part of the conversation. One of the things that we're trying to look at is the correlation between an engaged community from a marketing perspective and then when you have an issue, how we help you, and then what does that mean when you go to buy a new vehicle, right? Because we want to be able to correlate the fact that we helped you in the space and the fact that you came back. One of the things we also want to look at is if you have an, you know, if the average life cycle is 11 years, hopefully it comes down because that's a really actually a long time, is if we help you now and we come back to you in three years and say, are you ready to buy a vehicle? Can we do it? In some of our other markets, they actually are using serum related to social. It's just not been totally embraced in the U.S. because they don't, we, we consider it spam here. If you talk to us yeah. on social, you don't want to get an email from us saying, come buy a vehicle. Right. But in other markets like Brazil, it's totally acceptable. So we're trying to look at that data. localization. This, right. How can we leverage that data? And other markets like our GM International Operations, India, it's acceptable as well. Europe, not so much. Privacy laws in Europe are crazy and Canada as well. So just trying to look at those different um, ways for us to work better in the future. Whitney, I want to get your take on it and, and, and on, on social because it's a big part of our business. We are big into social business. We think social is the next generation. Social business was like e-business. Mm -hmm. And I want to get your take on it because social's evolved from, you know, hey, PR, buzz, hey, yeah. buy some stuff, we're having a promotion and trying to sell stuff on social versus have, looking at it as an environment. So I want you to compare and contrast the web. Mm -hmm. Because in the early days, I worked with Procter and GM, yep. and the interactive days, they called it interactive back then. That was the I web. I spent some time at P&G. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> and I noticed that's why I brought up. So I did my homework, did a little bit of homework. No, but P&G and GM and the car companies, they were very big early adopters on the web. Yep. When people were saying, oh, that's just a kid's thing, the interactive was what it was called. But that obviously became, people were buying and getting information with buying cars online. Well, getting information, then going to dealer, then you're doing e-commerce, and then the rest is history, and now we have the end of that at web era to social. How is social evolving as fast to being a viable platform like the web was? I mean, the yeah. web was laughed at early on. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So people thought we were social crazy. Was, <laughs> social was laughed at, but now the president's on, everyone's on, so, <laughs> but people are interacting, so it's a new channel. Mm -hmm. How is that evolving in your mind? And compare and contrast, if you can, to the other trend of the web and where are we? What's your take on status of the industry? I think the social's moving even faster than the web did. And if you aren't thinking about it or haven't thought about it, you're going to get left behind. I mean, one of the examples that I've been using in the last few weeks is I color my hair like a lot of women do, right? And I tweeted a hair coloring company, I won't name names, and said, hey, I'm this color right now. I, it's summer, I need to go lighter, can you help me? And their response was, call us on the 800 number. And I'm like, really, you can't help me on Twitter? And they're like, no, it'll be better if you call us. So I called, and the first question they asked me is, well, what does your hair look like? What color is it? And so I, I already told you what it was. I Googled myself, and of the first six images that appear, I'm the top three, like just based on my Twitter handle. And you could have seen my picture, so what if, in the future, and I'm not talking like a year, I'm talking like six months, that hair care company had responded to my tweet and said, I see these couple of pictures. 
are you thinking this color or this color? Is there any other yeah. picture? And Engage then you. Right. Tell me, is your hair thick or thin? And then said this and then gave me a link. I would have bought it right then. But instead, I called. I was annoyed. I thought about changing brands. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I really do think it's a viable option in the future, and the future is now. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it is accelerating. I, people are browsing and learning from their peers. It's an omni-channel environment. All that stuff is cool. So I agree with you. Um, what, what data practice are you using? Because now, obviously, if you're at P&G, then you're probably very data-driven, I'm sure. <laughs> GM is data-driven. Data-driven is everything. How do you share with folks watching who are going into social and expanding social, how to be data-driven and share some experiences that you guys do, best practices? Yeah, I think a lot of people really get caught up in trying to have a a really expensive tool or um, pouring over data. And sometimes it's just as simple as exporting the data that exists in the channel you're in and then looking at it. And you know, one of the things that we er learned really early on is that when we posted more than three to five times a week, we actually saw a drop in engagement. Now that's changed over time, but like right after we figured that out, uh, probably a year, a company came out and said, oh, Auto needs to post on this day, and they need to post six times a week, and da da da. Well, our data didn't say that. And so you can't take A, what people say, you have to kind of look at it, and B, don't overcomplicate it, just start simple. Like, yeah. is it what time of day I'm posting? Is it the channel? Like, one of the things we've been looking at a lot is um, when we engage with customers from a marketing support standpoint, we look at their profile and we pick one thing, like they go, went to this school or they live in this town, and it's personal. So just don't overcomplicate yeah. it to you the scare point. people. Right, because it, it, can, it can be scary. I love it, but it can be overwhelming. When done right, it's amazing. Right, it is. When and done I, wrong, it's scary. Right, and I think the future of big data, and for us it's called enterprise data warehouse, I mean the possibilities are yeah. fascinating and fun, and the sooner we get there, the happier I'll be. But you know, at the, when you're at the beginning of the journey, don't get so caught up at the end of the journey. Just right. take it one step at a time. So you're pioneering right now. And again, for the practitioners out there, what are some of the metrics you talk about kind of measuring engagement and trying to correlate that with, with future success? And, and, and what are the things that you measure that, that, are, that define engagement in your world? Yeah, so for us, we um, it depends on the channel, obviously, but we try to look at size of our community, engagement of our community, because if we're just posting and no one's actually replying or liking it, then we don't have a an engaged community. And that for us is health, is our community healthy? Um, I see a lot of pages out there, not just even our own, where they've been up for several years and they have no engagement. So at that point, it's like, do you really need to be there? We had a conversation, I'm in grad school, and we had a conversation the other day about B2C versus B2B, and we were talking about the mining crisis in Virginia a few years back, and someone was saying, oh, they should have leveraged social, and I'm like, but they're a B2B company, so if they had had a Twitter handle, who would they have been talking to? So you have to kind of, <laughs> right, you kind of have to re be realistic. Which looks good on paper, great right. engagement. Right. We're talking to ourselves. But be realistic about what your company is trying to achieve and look, you know, in, engagement might be a great score for you, but driving sales, like we, GM doesn't sell vehicles online, we sell them through a dealer. I think your point about not listening to consultants and people telling you this is the playbook. I mean, it's this reference architectures and best practices, but you got to take it with a grain of salt because your audience is your audience and beauty's in the eye of your own beholder, right? So you can't take a boilerplate. Right, and it's every social. community is different. Like we, the Corvette Facebook page is very different than, than the, the Silverado right. Facebook page right. or a Cadillac it's page. Demographics, it's, it's like a graphic. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, and it's and it's amazing to watch. Like one of the things we found with our Chevrolet Facebook page, which was fascinating, was more than half of our fans are outside of the U.S. Who would have thought, you know, on the first blush, that that would be the case? And then adding geo targeting, you're able to talk in their native language and work with them. So. That's super insightful. I think, you know, I showed you our listening engine. We build our own custom listening because why? I don't want this, we want our own stuff. We know what we want. We kind of know what we're looking for. So that's the advice that you're giving other people as well. Yeah, you have, I mean, I used to work at an agency for several years and GM was our, my client. I had other clients as well. But you need to know your client. You need to understand what's best practices, but you also need to know your community because you can't take I call it the peanut butter approach. You can't just peanut butter everything. It won't work. Yeah. <laughs> Whitney Drake, thanks for taking the time to share with us the data and socials. Great information. Like Jeff always says, the answer to all future problems will be on the cube by our super smart guests, and you are awesome. Thanks for Thank sharing. You I'll give much. you the final word. Quickly share with us what products you're using for Oracle, 
Uh, what are you doing with those guys? What, what are you guys using we for use, them? We um, use Engage and Publish from Oracle, and then we also use for CRM Siebel at GM on the customer care side. So right now we're in an integration between customer care and Siebel to make sure that we know a customer's history, how we can help them, and what the future holds. In the distant future, we'll be able to say, oh, thank you for your loyalty. We <laughs> want you to buy this vehicle. Yeah. So yeah, it's awesome. Persona-based, intelligent, machine learning is great stuff out there. Full 360, but engagement and intelligence systems are, are key. I wish I had more time to talk about some of the funnel infrastructure products that you guys gotta are looking get at. Back on but again. we got we to gotta get you back <laughs> on the cube. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much. We are live here on Howard Street with the Closing Things Down. This is the Cube. It's our flagship program powered by SiliconANGLE Media, SiliconANGLE.com, Wikibon.com research team, and of course, SiliconANGLE.tv, cube, uh, cube page there. If you want to get all the information for all the content, the trending stories, the crowd conversations, that we've aggregated the organic conversations and all of our videos all out there on crowdpages.co slash OOW15. That's for Oracle Open World. That's crowdpages.co slash OOW15. We'll be right back for more after this short break here at Oracle Open World. This is theCUBE. <laughs>